Many women believe that the greatest threat to their health is breast cancer or other kinds of cancer, but the truth is that heart disease, in the form of heart attack, heart failure, and stroke, is the leading cause of death in both women and men. The American Heart Association has made great strides in the past two years to raise women's awareness of their risk for heart disease, but there's still work to be done in this area. And today, cardiologist Dr. Evian Jawad from the Franciscan Physician Network Specialty Clinic will walk us through the important points of women and heart disease. This is the Franciscan Health Doc Pod. I'm Scott Webb. So, Doctor, thanks so much for your time. You know, I know men and women have the same risk factors for heart disease. So, let's just go through them. What are the risk factors for heart disease? Heart disease is the leading cause of death in women nowadays. And in the past 40 years, it had really declined, but younger women, it had plateaued. So, Heart disease, the risk factors, the most common are a family history of heart disease, smoking, obesity, diabetes mellitus. Early menarche actually in women can cause a higher incidence of heart disease. And risk factors of high cholesterol is another one. Metabolic syndrome is a recent concept that we came to know about in medicine where patients have truncal obesity, high bad cholesterol, low good cholesterol, and insulin intolerance, glucose intolerance, and increased insulin productivity in the body puts the vascular system into a higher inflammatory process, and that predisposes to accelerating. Heart disease is part of cardiovascular disease overall. Cardiovascular disease uh, affects the heart vessels, peripheral vessels, causes stroke, abdominal aortic aneurysm, peripheral vascular disease where the end, end point for it would be lower extremities amputation or presents with a heart attack like ST elevation myocardial infarction or unstable angina. Yeah, so early diagnosis and treatment, those would all be important factors in this and managing this for women. And speaking of women, you know, I know they wear many hats, right? Uh, Mother, daughter, wife, employee, and so many others, uh, and a lot of demands on their time. But they do need to remember to take care of themselves. We all do, but especially women, because heart disease is so prevalent in women. So that means taking a good look at their heart health. So maybe I can just have you take us through that. What does that look like? How can women best take care of their hearts? So... Nowadays, women are in the workforce just like men. So stressful life is leading cause of heart problems. And that's why women are catching up with men, especially like younger women, usually it's less incidence than men, but post-menopause, they catch up with men. The most important thing is lifestyle changes and risk modification and early detection of coronary artery disease as young as women in their 20s. So there is certain heart problems can happen for women who have polycystic ovaries or are born with congenital heart disease or when they go through pregnancies, especially multiparous pregnancy or pregnancy that is complicated with gestational diabetes and gestational hypertension are very high risk for complications compared to women who don't have those conditions. And it's modifiable. The risk factors that we can modify is smoking. If we cut back on smoking, it decreases the incidence of heart problems by 16%. Diet changes can lower the incidence of heart problems by 13% by cutting back on saturated fat and increase unsaturated fat and physical activities are very important. At least 30 minutes a day of physical activity is highly recommended. The other thing that really cuts back on the incidence of coronary artery disease is obesity. If they become in the normal BMI, that cuts back on the incidence of coronary heart disease by 8%. So if you combine all together, almost you can cut back by 50% if you lead a healthy, active life. 
That's good to know that there are so many modifiable factors. And I think one of the things, maybe it seems obvious, but maybe it's not to everybody, is women just need to have a primary care physician, right? Like they need to have a first point of contact, right? Primary care doctors are essential in patients' care and in everyone's care, actually. Before becoming patient is preventing problems. And the the main role for primary care to prevent coronary artery disease and cardiovascular disease in general overall is by checking patients' cholesterol. There is a certain percentage of population that are born with a family tendency of having abnormal cholesterol and abnormal triglyceride are at higher risk of premature coronary artery disease. So primary care doctor can detect this early and treat it appropriately. And the other thing is they they would pick up if patient is leading unhealthy life. If there are smokers, they would encourage patients to stop smoking. And if patients are obese, encourage patients to lose weight, put them in exercise programs to lose weight and become more healthy. Daily changes of patients' daily activities, just by doing simple things, they can improve their overall health. I'll give you a simple example that parking the car far away from the entrance just by walking to get from a parking lot to get to a building, that by itself is an activity. Using stairs instead of elevators, just simple things that you can modify to improve the overall physical well-being. Yeah, that active lifestyle is so key. Not just running after the kids or doing errands, making that walk a little longer and maybe taking the long way around Costco, things like that, right? Absolutely, yes. Yeah, so it's good to know that the primary care physicians really are all about helping women to prevent, to take those preventative measures, checking cholesterol, blood pressure, and so on. And women certainly need to address the stressors. Uh, that they know can impact, we know can impact their heart health. According to the American College of Cardiology, when not managed well, these stressors seem to impact women's heart health even more than men. So let's go through them. What are the stressors and why do they affect women more than men? Well, it's really unknown why women get affected more than men and uh, with stressful life. But one of the things is Pre-menstrual women go through hormonal changes, and that may be the affecting cause. Postmenopausal women, as I mentioned to you earlier, has higher incidence of coronary artery disease to the point they catch up with men. And the reason for that is really because of hormonal changes, but the treatment for it and the management for it is not very clear. We're still not sure if hormone replacement would halt the incidence of increased coronary artery disease in women. So it's still in study process. We're still having to gather more information about it. And so far, to lower the incidence of coronary artery disease, we cannot recommend hormone replacement therapy at this point. Yeah, interesting. This is such a prevalent issue for women, but there's still, as much as you know, there's still some unknowns and still more research and data to be collected in order to make the best recommendations, treatment options, you know, treatment recommendations for women. So let's talk about the habits, good habits. What are some of the good habits that women can adopt to decrease their risk of heart disease? First of all, they have to learn how to de-stress themselves, either by prayers, meditation, taking long walks, regular exercises. All these things really lowers the effect of stressful life, nowadays stressful life. And managing their time appropriately is also another thing that women should learn how to manage their life and de-stress themselves and not to burden themselves by too many responsibilities. As I mentioned, nowadays women are more out in the workforce compared to like last century, 100 years ago, where women were mostly at home. The incidence of coronary artery disease at that time were way lower than nowadays where women in the task force competing with men and having to deal with managing their family lives. Now, the important other problem is nowadays women smoke as much as men smoke, and that's a major risk factor that's affecting women. 
So those are the things that women in general need to tackle to decrease the risk of coronary artery disease, especially if they have family history of early coronary artery disease, which is women younger than age 60 or men younger than age 50 with incidence of coronary artery disease in their family. Yeah, it's so important to know your family history, a genetic predisposition, uh, to see your primary care, to do all the things that you've discussed here today. And maybe you could talk just a little bit about the advantage of aerobic activity. Why is that so key? Why do women need to get their heart rates up? Aerobic activity because it improves the cardiovascular system and it actually adapts the cardiovascular system to take more stress. The more uh, fit person, their baseline heart rate would be lower than unfit person. Aerobic activity also gets rid of the extra poison to the body, which is serum glucose. High serum glucose is inflammatory, has a major inflammatory response on the vascular system. And the body, if you're not exercising, utilizes it by secreting more insulin. And the insulin by itself is a pro-inflammatory hormone. So exercising makes the body get rid of the extra sugar, the triglyceride that's in the system. It makes the body utilizes it. And at the same time, it adapts the heart to go faster heart rate, and that, with time, would decrease the baseline heart rate and improve the cardiovascular system overall. When would a woman be referred to a cardiologist? Is that a regular heartbeat, a heart murmur, angina, all the above? Maybe you can just take women through that process of you know, they have a primary, there may be an issue. Uh, when would they be referred? The most common cardiovascular morbidities are hypertension and hypercholesterolemia. So if the primary care doctor is able to control systolic and diastolic blood pressure appropriately according to AHA guidelines, then there is no need to see a cardiologist. But when patients have accelerating high blood pressure or uncontrolled hypertension or signs of coronary artery disease, and women really have kind of different symptoms than men. They don't present with chest pain as much as men do. They present with excessive fatigue or shortness of breath or feeling unwell or just nausea and vomiting and they turn to be going through an acute heart attack. So early detection is very important. So that's why primary care are very essential in caring for overall population health, whether women or men, because seeing their primary care on a regular basis and having the health problems under control and managing them properly decreases the incidence of coming to the hospital with an acute heart attack, which is a very calm. It is a major health problem that has like a significant percentage of mortality depends on what they present with. So primary care doctors in general, they refer patients if they cannot control their symptoms or their comorbidities. In general, it's high blood pressure, high cholesterolemia, or hearing a new murmur, new physical exam or lower extremities edema, shortness of breath with minor activities, waking up at night, short of breath, gasping for air, you know, those are the major symptoms that patients present with coronary artery disease. Now, when it comes to cardiovascular disease, it's leg pain with exercise that we call it claudication or having many uh, transient ischemic attacks, which is a sign of vascular disease in the carotid arteries or vertebular arteries. So those are the things that, you know, primary care should pick on. The other thing is the arrhythmic diseases. The most common is atrial fibrillation. It increases incidence with age, and actually women with atrial fibrillation have higher incidence of having complication of the atrial fibrillation, which is, car which is strokes higher in women compared to men. 
So that primary care can pick this up by having regular EKGs. It depends on the age group, how frequent they can do it. If they notice an irregular heart beat, then, you know, having an EKG, and if it's irregular, refer it to the specialist for further care. This is such great information and really just encouraging women to, you know, see their primaries regularly. Correct. Uh, to work, yeah, to work with them on all the preventative measures. And then when things maybe aren't working, whether it's cardiovascular disease or heart disease, as you say, then they could be referred to a cardiologist, to a specialist to really dig in and get a handle on things. And I wanted to ask you, do we know why women sort of present differently when it comes to heart attack symptoms? There's like the classic symptoms we see in TV and movies with men, you know, Know, clutching their chests, that kind of thing. But it's not like that for women. You touched on that a little bit. It's different for women. The signs are different. The signs, symptoms are different. Why is that? Do we know why? We do not, but definitely they are very different to the way they present. And women tend not to reach to doctors as much as men do. They kind of downgrade their illness. I've seen it during my career as a physician. They downgrade their illness. In public, people think, heart disease is more a man disease. They don't think about it as a woman disease. Actually, as I mentioned to you, women get coronary artery disease as much as men do. And that's just so good to know because I think you're so right. I think women uh, are maybe conditioned or taught or whatever it might be, just something different. You know, The difference between men and women is that women tend to not reach out they tend to minimize things. They tend to keep things to themselves, and we don't want them to do that. We want them to reach out and to see their primaries and to go to specialists when they need to. And as we wrap up here today, doctor, just some takeaways for women when it comes to cardiovascular disease, heart disease, heart health. What's your best advice to women? Because as we've discussed here today, and we know they suffer from heart disease as much or more than men, and we don't want that. We don't want women dying of heart disease and there's ways to prevent, there's ways to treat. What's your best advice, doctor? So number one is that women have to know that the leading cause of death in women is heart disease. Second is a risk factor modification is very important. Stop smoking if you smoke. Avoid areas where people smoke because they become a secondary smoker. And regular exercise is very important. Weight loss, if they are obese, and early detection of diabetes mellitus, hyperlipidemia, and hypertension. Diabetes mellitus is becoming an epidemic nowadays. The incidence is getting so high. Obesity is an epidemic. 30% of population in the United States are obese. So those are risk factors that can be modified and by losing weight, eating healthy diet, losing weight can lower the incidence of coronary artery disease by 8%. Eating healthy diet lowers it by 13%. Stop smoking lowers it by 16%. So all those factors together can lower the incidence of coronary artery disease. And I want women to focus on how to de-stress themselves. The best is by exercising. They can do meditation, prayers, anything that lowers stress in life. Manage their lives in a smart way. Because like, as I mentioned, women nowadays, they work outside the house and they have the responsibility of their homes. So it's way stressful to women nowadays compared to 100 years ago. Those are the things that I highly recommend that women pay attention to and tackle to have a better life and healthier life. Yeah, and that's the goal, right? That's what we want. We don't want people, uh, women especially, you know, suffering in silence, whether it's COVID or anything else. We want them reaching out to their doctors, getting all of their tests, seeing specialists when they need to, taking care of themselves, quit smoking, lose weight, work out, all of that stuff. Doctor, you are so compassionate and knowledgeable. I feel like I could talk to you all afternoon. You have such an easy way about you. I just want to say thank you for your time and you stay well. Thank you so much for your time. For more information, go to franciscanhealth.org slash heart care. Take a free heart risk assessment or make an appointment for a screening bundle. That includes a heart and lung scan at franciscanhealth.org slash screening bundles. You can also read articles on our blog about heart care, including special concerns individuals with heart disease should have about COVID-19. 
And if you found this podcast helpful, please share it on your social channels and be sure to check out the full podcast library for additional topics of interest. This is the Franciscan Health Doc Pod. I'm Scott Webb. Stay well, and we'll talk again next time.